David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, The Starfish and the Spider, The Unstoppable Power of Leaderless Organizations by Ori Brathman and Rod A. Beckstrom. As the title suggests, this book is about leaderless organizations. In other words, decentralized organizations. These organizations have no hierarchy. They have no command structure. This gives the organization power. It is a major asset to them. The authors give this description of the spider and the starfish. With a spider, what you see is pretty much what you get. A body's a body, a head's a head, and a leg's a leg. But starfish are very different. The starfish doesn't have a head. Its central body isn't even in charge. In fact, the major organs are replicated throughout each and every arm. If you cut a starfish in half, you'll be in for a surprise. The animal won't die. And pretty soon, you'll have two starfish to deal with. As you can see from that description, the spider represents the centralized organization, while the starfish represents the decentralized organization. The authors give several examples of decentralized organizations such as Napster, Emule, AA, the Apache Indians, Skype, Craigslist, Wikipedia, Burning Man Festival. I'm adding Antifa and Black Lives Matter to this list. How do you know it's a centralized or a decentralized organization? Is there a person in charge? A coercive system depends on hierarchy and order. A CEO is in charge. And then the ranks filter down from there. In a decentralized organization, a catalyst, not a leader, gets things started and then fades into the background. Are there headquarters? Every spider organization has a headquarters. Google has a headquarters. Disney has a headquarters. Apple has a headquarters. They have a physical location. The decentralized organization doesn't have a physical location. Antifa, they're like AA. There are several chapters, but there is no central headquarters, as far as we know. If you thump it on the head, will it die? If you chop off a spider's head, it dies. Take out the corporate headquarters, a centralized organization will die. A starfish organization doesn't have a head to chop off. If an AA chapter burns down in Iowa, there are a hundred million other AAs to take its place. Is there a clear division of roles? Centralized organizations are divided into departments. There's the board of directors, executive officers, CEO, vice presidents, etc. In decentralized organizations, anybody can do anything. There is no CEO. There is no board of directors. Everyone is responsible for themselves. If you take out a unit, is the organization harmed? In centralized organizations, every department is important. If you take out a corporation's managers, who is going to instruct or look over the employees? If you take out the board of directors, who is going to manage the CEO? If a spider loses its leg, its mobility is affected. A decentralized organization is autonomous. It's not controlled by others or outside forces. Cut off a unit, and like a starfish, it does just fine. The reason a starfish organization keeps moving is because it's ideologically driven. Antifa's ideology is Marxism, and so is BLM. The ideology keeps them moving forward. Are knowledge and power concentrated or distributed? In spider organizations, knowledge and power are centralized at the top. The person in charge is believed to be the most knowledgeable and has the power to make key decisions. In starfish organizations, power is spread throughout. Each member is assumed to be equally knowledgeable. Is the organization flexible or rigid? Centralized organizations tend to be less flexible and rigid. A decentralized organization is flexible and less rigid. Can you count the employees 
or participants. Spider organizations have to count each and every employee because they have payroll, they have taxes. Even the CIA has to keep track of its agents, although it's top secret, but they still have to keep track of them. In starfish organizations, it's impossible to keep track of each and every employee. Do you think Black Lives Matter and Antifa know how many members are in their terrorist organization? I don't think so. Are working groups funded by the organization or are they self-funding? In centralized organizations, headquarters redistributes revenues. Without central funding, departments can't survive. Decentralized organizations are self-funding. Individual units might receive funding from outside sources, but they alone are responsible for managing those funds. Do working groups communicate directly or through intermediaries? Centralized organizations process information through headquarters. In open systems, communication occurs between members. Combating decentralized organizations. Three ways to combat decentralized organizations. The first one is changing the ideology. The only part of a decentralized organization that you can really attack is the ideology. If you change the ideology of the organization, you change the DNA of its structure. Centralize them. If you want to centralize an organization, hand over property to them. Give them property rights. In this way, the catalyst turns into a CEO and you have a headquarters, someone to answer to, the organization is centralized. Decentralize yourself. If you can't beat them, join them. If you are combating, let's say, Antifa or Black Lives Matter, well, you create another starfish organization who has the opposite ideology of both of them. In conclusion, some key takeaway points from this book. The decentralized organization has no leader. It has no headquarters. It has no hierarchy. This organization is great for terrorists like Antifa or Black Lives Matter or other terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda. The centralized organization has a structure, and this makes them rigid. You know, there's a CEO, there are employees, there is a headquarters, a command structure. Well, anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.